Hi, my name is Quas from Team Liquid, and this is my basic champion guide to Nidalee. So Nidalee in solo queue, I think, is a really strong pick. Uh, she's a lane bully that wins most lanes, and she can still bully like crazy, and apply a lot of split push pressure. Unfortunately, her team fighting is not that good, so unless you're building a lot of booster items and uh, just being really tanky, then you're not going to be doing as much as team in team fights. But you can always use split push if um, your team is um, okay with that, and they won't initiate a fight and die. So. Um, I rate it very highly anyways, um, just from having a really high snowball potential, I use really strong lane overall. So for Nidalee with Nidalee, um, you obviously always want to abuse the brushes. So the movement speed that it gives you is really nice for going in and out in the lane and just poking the enemy champion with auto attacks. So that's basically what you want to be doing. Um, you want to lay down traps around the lane as much as possible. In case you get ganked, you get an extra movement speed if they step on a trap. So um, that's a decent thing to do. Overall, you're just going to be um, pushing the lanes and pushing the waves in and poking the enemy champions a lot with the auto attacks, going in and out of the brushes, and just healing yourself off with your max, uh, with your E max, and just um, outsystering your opponents and pressuring really hard. Nidal is a very hard champion to get ganked. As long as you have traps around your lane and you're close to a brush, you can get a lot of movement speed and even dodge abilities with your W. So um, Nidalee is definitely one of the, the hardest champions to gank for top lane and uh, you should be able to get out of ganks really easily. So team fans for Nidalee, you're just going to be having to hit the front line um, as much as possible. You can't, you're not really a tanky to go in the middle of a team fight. So that's not an option definitely, but you can definitely also flank carries that aren't paying attention. So if you say if you're split pushing and you come to a team fight from behind the uh, the care line and just flank them. That's a pretty good thing to do. Just I would advise not to jump in right away. Just your auto attacks is strong enough from a distance. So just do that and try to place traps and throw spears from long range. And yeah, overall her team fighting is not that strong. So uh, she's more of a, a split play champion and snowballing. So you can win skirmishes really hard, but 5v5 team fights, she's definitely like lost around. When you're in lane and you are going to go for an all-in, if you manage to hit a Q on the enemy champion, I would advise not to jump in right away. It has a duration of three to four seconds and it gives you increased movement speed so you can actually kite out the champion and then just jump right before the mark of the wild goes down. So if you just uh, play around that and delay your jump and just do more auto attacks before you actually get a jump on, you'll uh, lower the chances of dying obviously and um, it will be a uh, safer kill overall. For runes, I like to go for attack speed marks, flat armor twins, killing armor seals. And for glyphs, I like to go for flat MR or 10% CDR scaling cooling reduction or scaling matrices. These are the masteries I use for Nidalee. For skill order, I like to take E or W level 1 and get to points in E by level 3 since it's just going to be your main uh, sustain and steroid ability. So you can get a lot of auto attacks in, um, in and out and also um, give yourself a little bit of health if you are uh, being traded on. And taking your W at level 2 if you didn't take it at level 1, it's a really good ability to take a level 1 if they have a gap closer or if they have a rage ability that you want to dodge. So you're playing against Darius and you can just uh, poke him with auto attacks and then W out like pounds out of his Q at level one. So you're gonna be getting Q level four and maxing E first, followed by W, I mean, followed by Q, and then lastly, your W. For item reflow in Italy, I like to start with the orange blade and a potion, as it's a pretty good item to start off for a lot of her ass. And then after that, if um, you go back to base with enough money for components for your rage play, you should buy that. Otherwise, you can just get another Dorans or uh, just two more Dorans, uh, Dorans blades just so you, you're sturdier and you do more damage when you trade. And um, you can also consider getting boots early on just to kite out champions of the top lane. A lot of the matchups, you're going to have to kite a lot. So getting early boots is definitely a pretty helpful thing to do for that. And after that, you get Rage Blade. I advise you to just go for a very heavy Bruiser build. So if you go for um, Frozen Gauntlet, uh, Sterx Gage, Frozen Mallet, if you got buffs as well, it's a pretty decent option as well. And other stuff like that, I think is the best approach to do it. Um, I think just with the Rage Blade and a Gauntlet, you should have enough damage anyway. So that's my approach to it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos here at LawClass.com. She is a really strong split pusher with a strong attack speed steroid. And she is pretty decent AD and AP scaling on her kit added already. So um, I say that's what makes her strongest right now. And she...